Secure Ninja. Secure Ninja is excited to announce our new line of video training courses we're calling the Online Sensei Series. These are on demand classes available 24 7, 365 at your convenience and taught by the best instructors in cybersecurity. Here's a complimentary taste of our new exclusive Red Team Hacking course developed and taught by Secure Ninja's Chief Security Architect, Kevin Cardwell. Red Team Hacking will teach you the skills, techniques, and proven methodology of how to set up and become a Red Team member. And now, here's Kevin with the Red Team Hacking Module 1 Lab 1 Hacking Toolkit. Enjoy! In this lab, we're going to look at the hacking toolkit. What I've got in front of me is the Kali Linux. This is actually the latest distribution of Backtrack. So what we have here, we have the applications menus. When I click on that, you see all these different options. Well, the Kali Linux is what we want to look at. And you see in the Kali Linux, we have the top 10 security tools. What was one of the ones I mentioned? Nmap. Again, what we're going to do when we build a red team toolkit is we're going to take a few of these, get masters of them, if you will, perfect our trade, and that's what we're going to use when we do our hacking. So there's our Nmap and Burp Suite, a lot of these other ones, and we got information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web applications, password attacks. All these types of things show you the types of our methodology. So this Kali Linux now is set up as a professional testing type of methodology. That's what it's used for. So when we explore our hacking toolkit, we can start with this, okay? But I'm a command line person, so I'm gonna go over here and start up my friendly neighborhood command line. This is a terminal window within the Kali Linux shell. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use our popular tool Nmap. So if I type Nmap by itself, it comes up and gives me all these options because Nmap has all these wonderful options. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Nmap Dash, lowercase s is for scan, uppercase s is the type. This is a SIN scan. So it's going to send the SIN packet out, but not complete the three-way handshake. And I'm going to scan this entire network that I'm connected to here. So I just do the slash 24, which is for your option for actual CIDR, Classless Internet Domain Routing. Now this is a SIN scan, I can change this to a P and this is a ping sweep. So when I do a ping sweep, this will come up and show me my live targets. So I got a target at dot one, dot two, dot one twenty eight, and dot one fifty seven. Well one of these is backtrack. So now on backtrack or Kali Linux, if config ETH zero, this shows me one twenty eight is actually this backtrack or Kali Linux machine. So now I go back to my scan, and I do my dash SS, but there's no reason to continue to do all these targets because I only want to find live systems. I already found them. So I'm going to do dot one, comma two, comma 157, comma 254. Now what I'm going to do is probe for the open ports on these machines because I need open ports for potential access. A port is a doorway. If I find a doorway on a machine, it's potential access to that machine. So now I do my scan. And now it's going to go out and it's going to check ports on each one of these machines. As you see is, there it goes. It shows. In this case, we got a DNS a domain port there. So let's do this so we can uh, look at our screen a little better. We'll pipe it into more. What we love about Unix and Linux is we can pipe anything to anything else. So this dot one has all these ports open, 135, 139, 443, 445. So what? These are ports that can be used in our attacks. So depending on what services are running on these ports, is what we're going to do as we get more and more deeper into this. Now we're going to not spend too much time on Nmap because we'll do a lot more of it later. So this shows you the kind of ports that are open on this machine that I looked at so far. And 157's up, but 
no ports open on it. All thousand scan ports on 157 are closed. And that's how it's set up if a Unix or Linux machine hasn't been set up for any networking. So we look at the different ports and there we go. That's our scan. So what we've done here is use an in-map, we've explored, we found live systems, we looked at ports. So the next thing we want to know is what services are running. We could continue to scan all the targets, but we've only got one target that's actually got any ports open, so we'd concentrate on that. So what we do is we want to know what's actually on that target. So we use that dash S uppercase V and then we just scanned for that specific target itself, which in this case is dot one. What this does is this will go grab the banner from that target, which should tell us or give us an indication of what service is running on that machine. And then what we do is we take those services and we start looking for vulnerabilities on those services, either with a vulnerability scanner or doing some techniques we'll look at momentarily. Again, because it's going out and doing the actual services scan, it's going to take more time. But what's nice about InMap is I can get a live update by hitting the space bar. So if I hit the space bar, it should give me a live update, and there it is, telling me that it's in the process of doing its service scan. So it's doing the service scan right now, and it says it's about 71% done. Now, it's not exact timing. It's kind of like Microsoft, when Microsoft tells you two minutes left to copy, and 10 minutes later, they're still copying. And there you go. Now you see what's happened here. Now we got Microsoft's HTTP API, Application Programming Interface, so we have more information about the target, okay? Different things. We got Microsoft's, uh, we got VMware Authentication Daemon, and VMware Virtual Center Web Service. So we have all these actual services running on that machine are pretty much for VMware. But remember, from a red teaming concept, we want to find open ports, services and look for vulnerabilities in those services. All right, so this is the types of things we would do using our hacking toolkit. Now this is just in map. One of the other tools we talked about was Netcat. So what we do with Netcat is, it's kind of like a telnet. So if I type Netcat in C and I give it an IP address to connect to, in this case we would like to connect to dot one, and then I just put in the report. Because if I do port 23, there's no port 23 open from our scan, it's not gonna connect. So in this case, it connects and grabs the banner. So you see now that on port 902, the banner says it's VMware authentication daemon version 1.10, SSL required. So what that shows you is that's the version of software running on that port. So now we would start looking through our references, our planning, or our lab environment, we start looking to see if any one of these services returned by this target would potentially give us a vulnerability that we could exploit. That's what red teaming is all about, is to identify what ports are open. Well, first, live systems, ports are open, what services, and then we're going to actually go after and attack the services. So, so far, we looked at InMap, and we looked at Netcat. Well, what about vulnerability scanners? Well, if we go up here to the applications, we have our friendly neighborhood Kali Linux, and we have vulnerability analysis. You want to do Cisco auditing? There's Cisco auditing tool and a lot of other ones. You want database assessment? There's a whole list of tools for you for database assessment. Fuzzing? Bunch of tools for that. Some scanners for you. Nikto. I mentioned Nikto before. There it is. Open source assessment. And then OpenVAS. And OpenVAS is a nice little toolkit scanner that we can use for our vulnerability scanner. But remember, our main thing to look at here is just our hacking toolkit. The next thing we would look at, web applications, there's some web application vulnerability scanners for you. Whole list of them you can use and practice with. There's the W3AF also that we talked about. And then we've got password attacks, wireless attacks, and then our exploitation tools. Because remember we said the exploitation frameworks are usually how we're going to go about our attacks. And Cisco, since it is a popular vendor out there, there it is, Cisco attacks. Exploit database. Metasploit, there's the Metasploit we talked about. Network exploitation, social engineering toolkit. So all these are exploit frameworks and exploit tools. We will use some of them as the course progresses, but right now we're just looking at the hacking toolkit and mainly looking at the tools that are available in the freely downloadable Kali Linux.
So if you have Kali Linux, you can follow along and practice as we go through in the lab environment, because most of the tools we run will be within the open source distribution, Kali Linux. Next thing we're going to cover is exploitation. We're going to use Metasploit. To start Metasploit in our Kali Linux, we do MSF console. It'll take a little bit of time to start up. When it starts up, we're going to enter our information. Now, we're early on, we're doing a hacking toolkit, so we're going to use a script. I recommend you always practice, get it working, and then write a script, which is just basically a text file, not a script like a programming script, which of course you might want to write those. But what we do is we just write a script of text. So if you see here, I've got use exploit. So what we're going to use is a Windows exploit called SMB, the server message block, MS08067. Exploitation is not 100%, but this exploit is about as close to 100% as you can get. And what we do with it is we're going to pop or exploit the server service, the vulnerabilities in the server service. And it's been pretty much in all versions of Windows. So we highlight it, we copy it, and then we just paste it into our Metasploit tool. This is why we use scripts. And now we're ready. So we've set the target 12. Target 12 is Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 2. Well, how do we know that? We know that by doing our information gathering and our sequence of events and our process and methodology to tell us that. So we've got exploit-i, which means interact with the shell. So if all goes well, we will see a command shell session open and then get a command prompt on the machine. Now remember, exploitation's not 100%, so it might fail. In this case, we're triggering the vulnerability, and as easy as that, it's over. We just exploited that machine. Now, we're not going to go into all the details of the exploitation or anything like that because we want you to understand that we just exploited the machine. Now, what we love about this exploit is, is it's multi-threaded usually. We can get more than one. It's multi, we get multi-exploits on it. So what we do is we do a control Z, which backgrounds the session, say yes, hit enter. That session's backgrounded. So now if we do a sessions-l for list, that shows us our session, right? So now, let's try again. We just go exploit it again, see if we get the box to fall over twice. And there we go, trigger and bang, command shell session two opened. So now we have two sessions on this machine. So if I do a control Z, a yes, to background the shell, and then a sessions-l for a list, there's my two sessions. You're probably saying, well, how do I interact with the session? Is do a session dash I to interact with number one. Sessions, and there you go. Now I'm in the first shell. Control Z, background shell, yes. Now, what you want to remember is when you do this, we're doing what's called a normal shell. Later on, we'll do advanced shells. They're a little bit different. But if you see here, we're just doing a shell bind TCP, which is a generic basic window shell. All right. Now, what about if the firewall's on? We're doing red teaming. In a red team environment, typically, we're not going to have this nice, perfect solution where the firewall's not on. There's going to be a filter or a firewall in place. Well, we have a solution for that, too. So let's look at that. So if we go over here and we go start, we go into the control panel, Windows Firewall. Okay, what we have here is we have a machine where, as you see, the firewall's on on this machine. So now if I go back to my Kali Linux and I do my traditional shell, it would fail, right? So if I do a set R host 92.168.1775, .1 which is the IP address of that box, and I do a exploit dash I, the firewall is on. So this will fail. In red teaming, you will run into a firewall environment. So what do we do? Well, we set up the concept of a reverse shell. So I go back to my script. I just add this here, L port 123 network time protocol, because it usually will egress out of a firewall environment. So that says to the victim, connect back to me on port 123 and connect to host 128. And as I said, this host is 132. So if I go copy, and I go back to my backtrack, or sorry, Metasploit console, and I paste, enter, 
Now, I just broke through the firewall. Even though the firewall is on on that machine, it doesn't matter because the reverse shell. So the reverse shell, see how it says here, starting reverse handler on port one, two, three. That connects back to me. So now if I do a net stat on the compromised machine dash A in, pipe it to find STR one, two, three, there's the established connection with me, 192.168.177.132 to port 123 in an established state. So what I've done is I've effectively, effectively compromised this box through the firewall. And how do we know the firewall is on? Once again, if we switch back, firewall is on. And just to prove to you this is box 132, so you know it's not smoke and mirrors like a magician. So what I do is I just do a IP config. As you see here, 192.168.177.132 is definitely one of the interfaces on this machine, and therefore we have successfully compromised through a firewall, which is imperative when you're doing your red teaming skills. You practice without the firewall on, you turn the firewall on, and then you practice with that on a flat network. And once you get through the flat network, you put in filters, the router and those types of things, and you go from there. And this concludes this lab. We hope you enjoyed this short preview. If you'd like more information on the growing list of online Sensei Series courses, then head over to secureninja.com slash Sensei Series. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.